79-76. They turned the ball over 22 times. Most turnovers in a tournament game this year. They still win the game. Why do they win the game? 14 offensive rebounds, 15 second chance points, and Kansas State fumbled it away. Had a couple of their star players foul out down the stretch. They went six minutes on a scoring drought while FAU went on a 13 to one run. Marquise Noel did about everything he could except not taking that last shot. I'm really not sure why he didn't shoot that basketball. Uh, he needed 33 to send it to overtime. 30 points, 12 assists, five steals. Elijah Martin, 17 points, pacing Florida Atlantic. And how about Vlad Golden? I mean, the man in the middle, 14 points, 13 rebounds, couple of blocks, really a defensive stalwart for the FAU Owls, headed to the Final Four. This Elite Eight postgame report is presented by Belfort Restoring More Than Property. Hakeem Dermish alongside Tim Doyle, Kyle Boone joining us as well. Tim, your reaction to Florida Atlantic headed to the Final Four. Wasn't necessarily the prettiest game of all time, but they just find a way. It's a balanced team. It's a team that has never, I repeat, never lacked confidence. And this was a game that was surely back and forth but a 15 to one run, they made their free throws down the stretch and they dominated. I repeat, dominated the backboards, 44 rebounds. Yes, they threw the ball over the place to the tune of 22 turnovers, but they did the little things and they executed offensively down the stretch. And what a story Noel was for Kansas State, but in this game, he just did not get enough supporting help. One player can't beat five, and the total team effort of FAU is the difference. Before I go to Kyle here, what happened on that final possession for Kansas State? What, what, what broke down there? Yeah, I mean, it's never easy to get a hoop when you, me, everybody in America knows they're trying to shoot a three, you know? So um, they did a, a fine job of trying to extend the game, but it's hard to extend the game when you're not making free throws. You see Vlad Golden there. He was everywhere. Yeah. And I love the fact that it wasn't necessarily pretty all the time, but he was throwing the bodies all over the place, knocked somebody over, dunked on somebody, uh, got his shot blocked, kept coming at you. That's the best way I could describe FAU. They just kept coming out their opponents. Memphis, down late, kept coming out. Oh, FDU, everybody's darling, trailing in that game. Kept coming after you. Tennessee, they played awful in the first half. Kept coming after you and then in this game of back and forth where you saw like a jab a jab a jab they throw the final knockout blow 15 to 1 run 35 wins mind blown and this is what I'm talking about with the NCAA tournament it came we need more mid-majors continuity experience culture been around the block this is the new age of college basketball with all of the transfers, with all the NIL. If you have a team that everybody's on the same page, you have a massive advantage. Hats off to FAU. Kyle, how would you describe the end of game execution? Because I thought it was putrid by Kansas State. I, I get it. Look, everybody in the gym knows at Madison Square Garden that he's going to hit a three. But he, shoot a three. he had the ball. Shoot it there. You shot one from the logo before at Madison Square Garden. This is to tie and send it to overtime. I'm just a little confused as to why Noel didn't shoot that ball and tried to send it over to Ishmael Masood. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I mean, Marques Noel has been the story of the NCAA tournament, at least in the past few days. And not getting a shot off at the end of that game, I think is is really horrendous by Kansas State. I would have preferred Noel just take a full court shot than not getting a shot off from someone else handling the rock late. So I think it's it's certainly I think we were robbed of potentially a fantastic story. Noel was great in this game, had 30 points. He set an NCAA tournament record with assist in the Sweet 16. Kansas State's season just comes to an end, and it's an unfortunate end because uh, the way that they executed at the end of this game leaves a lot to be desired if you're Kansas State. A nine seed in to the final four out of Conference USA, regular season champs, conference tournament champs. They only lost three games, three stinking games. They lost to Ole Miss, UAB, and they lost to Middle Tennessee down the stretch. Didn't lose ever again. 35 wins. So it's like you're sitting here and you're going, 
FAU, Florida Atlantic, out of Boca Raton. <laughs> they're on the beach. They got this great campus. They play in a small gym, and now they're about to go play in Energy Stadium. Are you kidding me right now? Yeah, and it's I think unbelievable. It's, it's incredible. I, yeah, and I think that the, their style of play, uh, they remind me a lot of Loyola Chicago a few years back. That was a mm. team that was not led by one single player. Sure, I think we all lean on John L. Davis as their star player, but he got help today. Greenlee made some enormous shots. Uh, yeah, obviously, Vlad stepped up down low. This is a total team effort. This has like Loyola Chicago vibes. They came out of nowhere to make a Final Four, and then they were building something there that they had a successful run. Hey, recruits are going to Florida. Everybody's moving to Florida, and people are moving to Florida <laughs> in waves, so people want to go to school down there. They capitalized on that momentum. What are you laughing at? It reminds, it's a state that no, people no, are going to. It reminds to. me of the Seinfeld, Del, Del Boca Vista, <laughs> where they say we're going to move, move down there. No, but it's not, it's not just old people living in Florida. Everybody's moving to Florida right now, and now guys want to go down there and ball, right, rightfully so. I just love the fact, Kyle, that this team had adversity each and every game. You could almost say they could have lost every game. I remember watching the FDU game, and I was like, oh, my God, FDU is going to win this game. And they just kept coming after you. Uh, Dusty May, pay that man his money, Hakeem. Let me, let me, hey, Kyle, before, before I come to you real quick here, if Texas doesn't name Rodney Terry their head coach, would Dusty May get a look? Woody? Yeah, I would have to think so. Okay. Dusty Mays, I think, is probably in line for a major job upgrade this offseason. He's been rumored, I think, in coaching circles, said someone who was going to get a look at a number of different places. FAU will be really strapped to try and, and hang on to him, especially win 35 games at Florida Atlantic. Are you kidding me? He's going to get some looks. I think it'll be interesting to see kind of if, if FAU can hang on to him. Look, after their win over Tennessee, we saw a Dusty May, Matt Norlander interviewed him live on CBS Sports HQ, and he was emotionless. He was like, we expect to be here. We have three more wins. Okay, now they need to win two more games. And, and we're sitting here going, really? Do you think you can really win three more games? Okay, they've they beat, beaten Kansas State. Yeah. Can, can they realistically win two more games? Sure. They were 200 to one, by the way, to win the national title after Selection Sunday. So. Could they win? Sure, why not? It's a Cinderella story. They got a chance. We'll see what happens. I just, to me, it's like I look at this and I'm like, is this is this gonna is this gonna be is this gonna continue? And it just keeps going. You're like FAU. They oh, remember against Memphis, the timeout at the end of the game, the controversy there. Should have lost the game. Should have lost the game. Should have lost the game. They're they're down against FDU. Oh no, it's not Tennessee. Tennessee's kind of having their they're they're playing tight defense. They're getting bodied up, and then they they come back. They punch back. They find, like, 22 turnovers in this game, and they still win. Yeah, I, 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 It just doesn't make sense. If you look at their side of the region, who says they can't beat Creighton? Who says they can't beat San Diego State? Now, the other side of the region, they benefit from not being on the other side of the region. I think they would have a problem with a lot of those schools that are still on that side and still kicking, you know, whether it is Miami or Texas or UConn or Gonzaga. I mean, that's, that's, a, that, that, that's not a fit. But it's like the old adage, right? It's not who you play, it's when you play them. So they got a favorable matchup. They didn't see Purdue. They saw FTU. But uh, this team just has had so much heart and so much fight. And I, I absolutely love the fact that they just kept coming after you. And on the biggest stage, they shut down the biggest story in the NCAA tournament. They did. I mean, I know the kid they played great. I mean, Noel played great. It was amazing. But they beat him, you know what I mean? And no one ha had been able to figure it out. So, uh, Keontae Johnson certainly had his struggles. Uh, they got dominated on the glass. And they forced a lot of turnovers, Kansas State. But, man, he just did not get a lot of help. Kyle, you know what I feel like FAU played today? They played Big 12 basketball. Crashing the board, second chance points, and they won. Like, that's, that conference is the best in basketball. We can all agree on that. They, they were awesome. Now they only got one team left in Texas. But FAU was able to do what Big 12 teams do. Crash the board. Get re Vlad Golden had a monster game. Double-double. Kyle, what did you see out of Vlad Golden that was able to disrupt this Kansas State team when, when, when they got down in the paint? Yeah, I agree. This, this actually reminded me. FAU, I think today, did what we thought Houston would do in the NCAA tournament, which is just kill people on the glass. They were very physical. They were very competitive on defense. Vlad Golden, as you mentioned, 
was was just huge for them. This was his best game in the NCAA tournament by leaps and bounds. 14 points, 13 rebounds, two blocks. He had one big block on Noel when he was driving into the lane. Uh, a very balanced effort from FAU that I thought was really impressive. Elijah Martin was making shots. John L. Davis was big, as he has been all season. This team, they, they have kind of carved out their specific niches, their specific roles. Players know what they need to do, where they need to be. And this Owls team, they're playing with a ton of confidence right now. And going into Madison Square Garden, beating this Kansas State team, beating Marquise Noel and the way they did it is so impressive. I think it's, it's a fantastic story. Nine days ago, Hakeem, Florida Atlantic had zero NCAA tournament wins, zero. Now they're going to the Final Four. It's a fantastic story. It's part of what makes Mars Madness completely mad. Very much here for it. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.